we're asked to solve the system of differential equations x1 prime equals x2 and x2 prime equals negative x1 using the eigenvalue method. The first step is to write the system as the vector equation x prime equals p times x, which I've already done here on the right. Notice matrix P is the two by two matrix where in the first row we have entries zero and one. In the second row we have entries negative one and zero. To use the eigenvalue method, the next step is to determine the eigenvalues of matrix P. Recall we do this by setting up the equation, the determinant of the difference of P and lambda I equals zero, and then solving for lambda. So here we have the setup. Again, we have the determinant of the difference of matrix P and lambda times the two by two identity matrix equals zero. Simplifying inside the parentheses, the result is the determinant of the two by two matrix, where in the first row the entries are negative lambda and one, and the second row the entries are negative one and negative lambda. Now we evaluate the determinant. The determinant is equal to negative lambda times negative lambda minus one times negative one, which gives us lambda squared plus one equals zero. Solving for lambda, we subtract one on both sides and then take the square root of both sides of the equation. Notice this gives us lambda equals plus or minus i. Because we have two complex eigenvalues, this does affect our approach on how to determine the general solution. Looking in our notes below, for each pair of complex eigenvalues, we can find the general solution using just lambda sub one, an eigenvalue, and the vector v1, a corresponding eigenvector. Step two, after we determine lambda sub one and the vector v sub one, we write the vector equation x one of t equals the vector v one times e to the power of lambda sub one t. Next, we apply Euler's formula on e to the power of lambda sub i t. Recall lambda sub one is a complex number. Step four, we write the result in the form of x one of t equals x three of t plus i times x four of t, which means we separate the real part and the imaginary part. From here, x three of t and x four of t are two linearly independent solutions to the system, and therefore we can write the general solution as x of t equals c1 times x3 of t plus c2 times x4 of t, where x3 of t is the real part of v1 times e to the power of lambda sub one t, and x4 of t is the imaginary part of the vector v1 times e to the power of lambda sub one t. So going back to our work, we know lambda sub one is equal to negative i, and lambda sub two equals i we can actually determine the general solution using either lambda sub one or lambda sub two. We'll stick with lambda sub one, which means we now need to find a corresponding eigenvector for lambda sub one equals negative i. Recall to find a corresponding eigenvector, we set up the equation, the difference of matrix P and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector, and then determine a vector v. So again, using lambda sub one equals negative i, we'll go ahead and set up the equation, this gives us, again, the difference of matrix P and lambda times the two by two identity matrix times vector V equals a zero vector. Simplifying inside the parentheses, the result is the two by two matrix where in the first row we have I and one, and the second row we have negative one and I. Recall the system is dependent, meaning we have an infinite number of solutions, and therefore we can determine a corresponding eigenvector using just one of the equations. And that's because the equations are multiples of one another. Notice the first equation in the system is i times v1 plus one times v2 equals zero, or i v1 plus v2 equals zero, which we can also express as v2 equals negative i times v1. Using this equation, if we let v1 equal i, notice v2 is equal to negative i squared, and since i squared is equal to negative one, we have v2 equals one. So we'll let the corresponding eigenvector, the vector v1, be the vector i1. And now we can determine the general solution using lambda sub one and the vector v1. This question doesn't ask, but remember that lambda sub two is equal to the complex conjugate of lambda sub one, which we already know from solving, but it's also true that a corresponding eigenvector for lambda sub two, which we call vector v2, is equal to the complex conjugate of the eigenvector v1 and the complex conjugate of the vector i1 is the vector negative i1. To find the complex conjugate of a vector, we take the complex conjugate of each entry. The complex conjugate of i is negative i, the complex conjugate of one is just one. But again, we don't need this to find the general solution for this problem. The next step to find the general solution is to write x1 of t, 
equals the vector v1 times e to the power of lambda sub 1t, which in our case gives us x1 of t equals the eigenvector i1 times e to the power of negative i t. And now we apply Euler's formula to e to the power of negative i t. Let's do this on the next slide. e to the power of i t is equal to cosine t minus i sine t. Performing the substitution, we have x1 of t equals the eigenvector i1 times the difference of cosine t and i sine t. Next, we multiply. Notice the first row of the two by one matrix is i cosine t plus sine t, and the second row is cosine t minus i sine t. And now we write this matrix as a sum of two matrices, where we have the real part in the first matrix and the imaginary part in the second matrix. This gives us x1 of t equals, with entries sine t and cosine t, plus i times the matrix with entries cosine t and negative i sine t. Now we have x1 of t in the form of x3 of t plus i times x4 of t, and we can write the general solution. The general solution is simply x of t equals c1 times x3 of t plus c2 times x4 of t, where again x3 of t is the real part of the vector v1 times e to the power of lambda sub 1t, and x4 of t is the imaginary part of the vector v1 times e to the power of lambda sub 1t. I hope you found this helpful.